My name is May Barazi. I was working in Poland um, as a program uh, officer uh, responding to the Ukrainian refugees. I am Mary Beriot O'Connell and I've been working since early April, so uh, one month after the onset of the Ukraine crisis, uh, covering Moldova, Romania, and now Southeast Ukraine, so Odessa mainly. My name is uh, Marta Leboreiro Nunez and I work with uh, IOM since uh, four years ago. I'm currently the center uh, co-coordinator of the regional um, of the regional platform for the response to the Venezuela situation in Latin America and the Caribbean. My name is Fernanda Baumhart and I have experience in transit settings mostly in Latin America, um, in Venezuela, Colombia, Brazil, and in the borders as well, as well as Ecuador in the response for um, earthquake in 2016. So the operation was an emergency operation. Therefore, everything had to happen fast. Sometimes transit settings will um, have communities and different groups for a week, for two weeks, for a month. Sometimes this comes into three months or so. So it all depends on, on what is the, the context really. So basically, one of my main lessons learned is when it's a, a short time span, um, that people are really on the move, so they're there for just a few days. It's really hard to engage them. We have learned here in the in the Venezuela well, in the response to the Venezuela situation is uh, that we have a large number of population moving, and um, and the thing is that the transit centers or what we call the temporary collective shelters have been built based on the needs in each of the locations. And it has been some kind of spontaneous, um, spontaneous places. Not only are people moving, but they are taking different routes and ending up in very different locations, scattered across very large geographical areas, and ending up in both very rural areas or urban areas. So it's been very difficult to even know where the people are and follow them up with information, answers to their questions or feedbacks, obviously. We encountered a challenge. Uh, we decided to uh, have three tents. The site uh, had a tent for uh, reception and information one tent was for waiting area and one tent was for canteen where hot meals were served. The three tents originally were supposed to be close to each other. However, once we started the construction, uh, the land was not uh, in a way where we can have them all in the same area. Therefore, the canteen was pushed a little bit further and you had to walk three to four minutes to get to the canteen. Another issue with participation is assessment fatigue. Um, there's always this kind of fatigue that comes after a few weeks, right? Because all the actors come and go and ask questions and have them sit and, and answer uh, the same things over and over again. Uh, so assessment fatigue uh, and participation can be seen as the same as yet another assessment that will come that nothing will come out of, right? And especially because the context is very difficult, I think many, many actors have con come and gone in this context in rural areas and in urban areas and decided not to do anything because it's too complex. Um, so you have maybe even more uh, fatigue there. So yeah, it's difficult to ask them to participate again. We cannot say that they were involved in the process because they are also always moving constantly. But what we have learned is that in some locations, for example, in Colombia or Brazil, we have had um, some collective sites where uh, where the capacity was overreached. So we had to build a second one on a third one. And in that phase, we are able to get uh, all the lessons learned, to get the voice of the migrants. But we are always explaining that everything that you are telling us will be used for the ones that are coming after you. So we will improve our response thanks to the things you are telling us. We know you will keep moving on your migratory road, but we will use all of this information. And this is the way we are engaging with them. 
because they understand, like they have this solidarity, they know the situation in their country, so they know there are people coming after them. And if we really explain the context on how we are using this information, they are able to participate. So we've been learning with time how to get to the minimum standards. And a complaint feedback mechanism wasn't the priority on the first day. We had to shelter a massive number of, uh, of people. And, um, and also we had organizations that would learn it from zero. So we had uh, small local NGOs, we had um, faith-based uh, organizations that never work on a humanitarian response. So we had to build their capacity first to, um, to get all to the same line on uh, understanding what is AAP, PSCA, what is communication with communities. And from there, we could start building a complaint and feedback mechanism. The other challenge was working with the management of the site who didn't see it as a protection issue while they saw it as a logistic problem for them. This was extra work they didn't want to do. Again, uh, I would, would love to um, have us maybe did capacity building for all the stakeholders to tell them this is a protection issue. There are humanitarian standards that we should uh, really follow to ensure, number one, the safety of our beneficiaries. The mental state and the, psycho, the psychological state of these people arriving at these transit settings, it's a very particular one that we cannot just expect that we will be engaging these people in terms of helping us design programs, right? We need to first tackle in the psychosocial support uh, modalities and also the listening modalities in terms of what can we do better, what are your key uh, recommendations that ultimate needs right now and sometimes what they will say is I need a phone because I need to reach out to my family that was left behind. One of the answers is to do plenty of outreach to have very mobile teams also because the challenge is that the situation is still unstable right the war is still going on you never know if if tomorrow another 20,000 people are going to cross the border every day. So mobile teams uh, doing outreach and covering uh, areas uh, and not just one city or one neighborhood are very helpful in my view to cover all these needs um, and work on participation, information, feedback. And so if you have stable po points of information that people know they can come to on top of these mobile team doing constant outreach, that will be very efficient.